We see it everywhere, at the park, in restaurants, and inside our homes and cars. Kids connected to handheld devices and disconnected from the world around them. According to the latest research, the average 13-year-old spends eight hours per day, seven days a week, glued to a screen. On today's Weekend Connection program, school counselor Tom Kirsting explores the device-dependent world our children live in and how it is impacting their mental and emotional well-being. So, let's get connected. This is Weekend Connection on the Bible Broadcasting Network, and my guest today is Tom Kirsting, author of the book Disconnected, How to Reconnect Your Digitally Distracted Kids. Tom explores the device-dependent world our children live in and how it is impacting their mental and emotional well-being. Uh, Tom, first of all, thank you for joining us today for Weekend Connection. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. So, Tom, uh, we go back to the beginning. You began your career as a school counselor and therapist some 20 years ago, but suddenly you noticed an increase in students being diagnosed with anxiety, ADD, ADHD. Where did this observation lead you as you explored social media and its relationship to human behavior? Well, it's interesting. This, all of this for me started nine, around nine years ago. I, uh, at the high school where I work, um, you know, we have a committee called the 504 committee, and essentially what we do is we receive referrals for students that have disabilities, and then we ascertain whether or not the student is eligible for special accommodations. So back back then, 2009 and, and the, all the years previous to that, you know, just about every referral we would get would be for a kid with a physical disability or concussions or Crohn's disease or diabetes. 2009, something changed. All of a sudden, every referral we started to get was for students that were teenagers, 14 and 15, that had been recently diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. Uh. So that really got my wheels spinning, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, because um, you, you don't catch attention deficit disorder when you're 14 or 15 years old. Um, and from that point, I just dove deep into research and came across a lot of interesting factors linking the chronic technology use to a changing brain and a term unofficially called acquired attention deficit disorder. Mm. So are we talking somewhat about an addiction since the child is searching for that stimulation that the cyber world only can offer? Without question. Um, so I don't have a statistic, but the, the, it, it's a pervasive addiction that's right under the noses of all of us, all of us parents, all of us uh, academics, teachers, and so forth. Um, and it's designed that way. So, for example, the average kid nowadays spends nine hours of their day looking at a screen. Mm. Um, that includes video games, their, their smartphones, social mm. media, TV watching, and all that stuff. And if, I, I always tell people, I wish they could shadow me for a day, come to my private practice or at the high school, and just listen to some of the conversations that I have with parents. And when we hear... Um, from a parent that when they took their kid's Xbox away, that the kid went berserk and punched holes in the walls and so forth, or we took my kid's uh, smartphone away, and the kid left a suicide note, we know that they're addicted to that. That's not a normal reaction to something uh, mm -hmm. that seems trivial. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with Tom Kirsting today and uh, discussing his book, Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. Tom Kirsting is a veteran speaker, frequent television guest, and expert host with over 100 national appearances to his credit. Tom, what is neuroplasticity, and how does this relate to our smart devices? Yeah, that's uh, the first part of my book. I, I talk about neuroplasticity. So neuro neuroplasticity is the, uh, the greatest breakthrough in modern-day psychology. Essentially what it means is, the, is that the brain is malleable. The brain, in other words, like a piece of plastic, can be can be formed and shaped under the right temperament. Now, the temperament that requires for a brain to change itself um, requires three hours or more per day of high stimulation. So, mm -hmm. if you ever look at a picture or an image of a brain and you see those tree branch-looking electrical impulses, they look like lightning strikes. Mm -hmm. Those are neural pathways, and every one of those neural pathways is critical to human functionality. You need one to communicate, to be able to make good eye contact. You need one to cope. You need one to focus and concentrate. So all of the important aspects of being a human, you need these neural pathways. Now, the problem is 
if a human brain is involved in anything for three hours or more per day that's highly stimulating, it will grow new neural pathways to assimilate and adapt to that environment. Mm. And it will prune away the neural pathways that aren't being used anymore. That's called neural pruning. So imagine that. You have a kid who's trying to sit in a classroom and focus on a teacher for nine periods a day, but their brain no longer operates like that because they don't have a neural pathway to allow them to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's essentially what what we have going on. Now, I I read your statistic, and I had to reread it three or four times to make sure my eyes weren't deceiving me. I really thought it must be a misprint. But I read that the average American family spends just three and a half minutes in meaningful conversations per week. Now, when I first read that, my brain said per day. (laughs) But then I had to reread it, and it's three and a half minutes per week. Tom, how did we how did we get here? Well, it's, it's it's really mind-boggling when you think about it. So, and you can I cite that research in the book. Also, you can go look it up. I have the citation. So, three and a half minutes per week, the average uh, parent is spending a meaningful conversation with their children. How do we get there? We got there because if, if anybody listening right now goes to a mall or to a restaurant or to a city and looks around, mm-hmm. you'll see that there's very little human interaction right. and, and, and lots and lots of face-to-screen interaction. And unfortunately, that has found its way into the homes of American families nowadays. So although these kids are completely hooked and addicted to the devices, so are the parents. And essentially, you know, the latest research uh, shows that adults are spending slightly more than kids mm. uh, per day, a little more than nine hours a day in front of their screens. So the typical American family, I tell people when I give my lectures, if we had cameras, hidden cameras in households, the typical American family would look nothing like a traditional American family. Right. Uh, and essentially would look more like a bunch of individuals in the, under the same roof staring at their own type of screen. So that's part of the problem. The dinner table is something that's gone. Even the car rides. Uh, I see when I'm pulling into the high school every morning. And, you know, there's traffic coming into the school. I look in my rear view mirror, and 10 out of 10 times, not 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 times in the passenger seat is the kid, the teenager, with their head bent, looking, right. at their, uh, looking down at their phone. So we've, we, we've, we, parents don't even know this. We're not even aware of this. We've relinquished our communication and, in many respects, our parental responsibilities to, to a screen. We're talking with Tom Kirsting today. He's the author of the book, Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. And now, Tom, on the flip side, there are positive outcomes for children who have dinner together with family most nights of the week, aren't there? There certainly are. So any family um, that has more times than not per week that has uh, sit-down family meals together uh, all the statistics show, especially you know, uh, uninterrupted, no devices or anything like that, but those families that sit and have family meals together like we used to do many years ago, uh, their children are, are less likely to have mental and emotional health disorders, less likely to have physical disorders, uh, more likely to be better in school, less likely to engage in early sexual activity, more likely to be happier and fulfilled, and more likely to be successful later on in life. And those are all the statistics that show that. So, and why is that? Because the parent to child relationship, the parent to child conversations are perhaps the most important thing in the world that our children need. Mm. Deep, meaningful conversation from mm. our parents uh, when we're children. And if we don't have that, uh, then we continue to see what I'm seeing on a daily basis with kids uh, poor coping skills, tremendous amount of anxiety, depression issues, and so forth. Um, so our kids need us, and the only way that we can for, forge that relationship is by turning its screens off. Mm. Now, Tom, there is positive self-esteem, but what are some of the dangers with social media self-esteem? Yeah, I, I actually call it that. I coined that term, social media self-esteem. Mm-hmm. So when you think of it, think of a pre-adolescent or an adolescent, right? So that developmental phase. It's basically this. Who am I? Where do I fit in in, the, in this world? Where do I fit in in this social pecking order? So it's sort of navigating um, where we're headed in life at that age. That's that in between from being a young child into adulthood. Now, the problem here is that as kids are searching for self, um, and now we give them 
uh, these weapons of mass destruction called mm-hmm. smartphones, where they can have all of this social media in the form of Snapchat and Instagram, they're, they're posting and receiving chronic information. All right? So you send a Snapchat or an Instagram, you get a like. And their brains begin to crave this attention so much so that they get that, that they're spending too much time and they're absorbing all of this artificial stimuli into their self esteem. So their self esteems aren't improving because self esteem starts with the word self. It doesn't start with the word others. So it's real self esteem is about our internal dialogue with self. So the outside world and all of the likes and everything else are gonna are gonna impact in a negative way the self esteem, not help it. You're listening to Weekend Connection on BBN Today. We're speaking with Tom Kirsting. He's the author of the book Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. Tom is a sought-after speaker, nationally renowned psychotherapist, author, and TV personality. So, Tom, for the parents out there, okay, so they bought their child a smartphone for Christmas, and the child followed the restrictions for a few weeks, but now it seems like the parent is losing them. What are those five yeah. rules to follow to reconnect with our kids? Um, when we're family, the average kid nowadays, okay, is getting um, their first smartphone in the fifth grade, okay, um, which is bad. I mean, that's like we consciously know in the back of our mind that's probably not a good idea to give our, our kids this this device that um, you know where they can go anywhere and do anything and acquire any knowledge they want. So. What I tell parents is this. If you get your kids a smartphone, okay, rule number one is that your child's self smartphone is your is, is your smartphone. Okay, it's not theirs. You're just loaning it to them. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's, you got to look at it like that. The next important concept of that, too, is um, if they break the smartphone, they're responsible for it. Um, if they engage in any inappropriate content on the smartphone, there's going to be rules. There's going to be regulations and so forth. Mm-hmm. Never, ever even once allow your kids to, to have their, any kind of a device in their bedroom. If there was a class in college called Parenting 101, that would be the first sentence in the textbook. Mm. Um, no device at room. all in the room? Not at all. No well, TV. If you have a TV in your kid's bedroom, get it out. Uh, if your kid's in there, whatever you think they're doing in there, they're doing something else. So get those things out of there and try to limit screen time for enter- entertainment purposes, including TV, to uh, two hours a day, no more than that. And then finally, you know, the most important rule is be a role model, which means as adults, we have to spend less time on this stuff and spend more time with our children. We have been speaking with Tom Kirsting today and discussing his book, Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. Tom offers insight and advice about parenting, relationships, and wellness. So, Tom, as we conclude today's program, direct us as to where we can find more of your resources. Yeah, I have a whole website dedicated to this topic. It's just my name, Um It's got everything. It's got all sorts of tips up there. It's got a cell phone contract. Uh, I post a lot of, you know, the latest uh, research and stuff that keeps coming out. And, um, you know, my book, Disconnected, you fully have to do is go to Amazon, Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, you'll find it right there. The book again is Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. Tom Kirsting, thank you again for joining us today on Weekend Connection here on BBN. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to this feature, a production of BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. BBN provides 24-hour Christian programming, great Christian music and Bible teaching. Listen to BBN by clicking the link in the description.